In the first weekend of February, the NASCAR season will ramp back up again for the Bushlight Clash, the location of the famed event being at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. A stark departure from what many fans remember this event to be. So, how did the famed race change to this? Well, today we're going to look back at the way that this race rose to prominence, how its original vision fell, and most recently, how it looks like it could be reborn again. Starting out, the Clash was integrated into NASCAR in 1979, meaning that it would be part of the sport for the big influx of new fans that came after that year's famous Daytona 500. Speaking of the 1979 variation of Speed Weeks, the initial year itself lent itself to a major storyline for the 500 that day. The first man to attempt the Speed Week sweep. Much like the others after him, Buddy Baker couldn't pull out the sweep but he at least could wipe away his tears with the 50 grand that he won in the quick dash. That's right, this race was merely meant for bragging rights and was a quick dash race, literally a 50 mile, 20 lap stint with caution laps not counting towards the race tally. And this is how the race remained mostly through to the early 90s. Of course, with TV becoming ever more important to NASCAR, a race like this would need to fit TV windows better. So, for the majority of the 90s, there were two 10-lap segments with field inversion at the end. This also was meant to keep the field competitive and close together. The format would stay in place up until the race's first rebrand in 1998, when the Clash would be renamed the Budweiser Shootout with two 25-lap segments. An added wrinkle to this being a two-tire pit stop being mandatory for each driver. With this rebranding, by the start of the 2000s, the shootout would be expanded to 70 laps. On top of this, it would be the first real implementation of green-white checker finishes and shootout-style restarts. The only change from between 2001 to 2003 were different segment lengths and the huge turn to a night race. And in my opinion, this huge move is one that made the event bigger than it was before. Just as in one hot night, the night racing gave a different, faster feel to the race. And remember that at this point, night racing at Daytona is still relatively new. By 2005, the race had 120,000 spectators, nearly the same amount that attended the Daytona 500 in 2022, and it beat the NFL's Pro Bowl when it was still good with a 5.1 rating. And while the popularity of NASCAR did fall in the coming years, it still had great moments in this race to keep the prestige up. Denny Hamlin's rookie upset win in 2006 and Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s first race win at his first Hendrick race in 2008 being instances of this. But 2008 also was the end of what many view as the golden era of the clash. And I'm not just saying that because of me being a former Dale Jr. fan. I didn't for the life of me understand as a kid why many thought The Clash had run its course at this point, as that was a storyline many had talked about at the time. And to be honest, I still don't. As small format tweaks to the race itself honestly kept it really fun, and they didn't really change too much, and the drivers really had a great attitude towards it. Unfortunately, that isn't how it continued to go. For 2009 onward, the field would be expanded. In 2009, pole sitters were no longer playing a part of qualification into this race, as Budweiser didn't sponsor the pole award anymore, but still sponsored the race. Instead, the top six teams from each manufacturer and a few others would be added in. By 2009, the field was 28 cars large. Of the races from 2009 to 2012, only the 2012 race could be called truly memorable, as what many see as the last great clash. This unfortunately equals out to the same year as the end of the Bud Shootout name. Starting in 2013, we would start into the dark timeline, the Gen 6 era. For those who forget, the Gen 6 car was highly anticipated at its launch. Most fans hated the boxy COT and were ready to move on. But in speed weeks of 2013, the new car was terrible. Everyone remembers the slog single file 2013 Daytona 500, but the 2013 shootout was just as bad. Oh, sorry. Did I say shootout? Where are my manners? I said the wrong name there. The race was actually called the Sprint Unlimited. 
While the race always had sponsor-driven names, ones like the Bush Clash and Budweiser Shootout, they at least sounded cool. It really sold the fighting driver's aspect more than Sprint Unlimited, which was literally the commercial slogan that Sprint was pushing at the time. The sterile racing truly did fit the sterile name of the event. This name and bland identity remained through Sprint's time as lead sponsor of NASCAR into the 2016 season. So the event needed a new name after Sprint left, and honestly, it really needed a new identity. So in 2017, the race was moved off its Saturday night slot and back to the traditional Sunday afternoon after Daytona 500 qualifying. And while there was a change of name and scenery, it really was just that, a change of name and scenery. The racing, or at times lack thereof, wasn't changed much, and the coming years saw it only get worse. In 2019, rain, for instance, was a threat all day, so for most of the event, it was single file just trying to get laps logged off until one really bad ending moment. Oh, oh Jimmy gonna oh, take over. Oh, no, oh, Jimmy! Contact! And around oh, goes Bernard, into the wall, taking cars with him. At this point, the race was viewed on life support by fans. The 2020 edition of the race really felt like it would need to be a turning point one way or another. Many fans had given up on the race entirely, wanting it changed, edited, or just completely destroyed in place of another points race or just nothing at all. So, this was a big race, or at least a big disaster, as the 2020 Bush Clash was the epitome of a shit show. After a clean opening 66 of scheduled 75 laps, it all hit the fan. Wreck after wreck after wreck collected literally every one of the cars in the field. By the end, only six cars remained on track, and only five of them were on the lead lap. I was at the remainder of the 2020 Speed Weeks that year, and damn, did those races, being as good as they were, make the Clash look like the ugly duckling even more. Pretty sure more people would remember how bad it was if it wasn't for Newman's crash at the end of the 500 that year. It was clear, though, that the race, as it was, was not viable. And... With the 2020 COVID pandemic, a few options for change actually revealed themselves. One was midweek races. Those were necessities to finish the 2020 season that were merely ideas NASCAR had mulled around for years. So, the clash would be on a Tuesday in an effort to compact the NASCAR schedule even more. And with the 2020 schedule restructured, there was road courses added, specifically the Daytona road course. So... That would be the plan of adding a Tuesday night bush clash on that Daytona road course. And the race was a massive failure. I also attended this race, and that night there were maybe a thousand people there. Even with limited capacity for COVID, it was pathetic. And honestly, aside from the last lap of racing, it really wasn't all that good overall. So, in 2022, the biggest swing on the event's history would be taken yet, moving from its traditional Daytona location to the LA Coliseum. And, even with a lot of pushback from fans, it was honestly pretty fun. The change to a quarter-mile short track was a change many fans seemingly would like. Old school with a new school flair. A halftime concert with Ice Cube and another with Pitbull before the race were a big shift from the traditional NASCAR-centered entertainment and more towards an LA market. And while there were plenty of opinions on the race, it ended up being a smash hit for both NASCAR and Fox as the race's biggest viewership in nearly a decade was tallied. Now, heading into 2023, The Clash enters its second year in the Coliseum, with Wiz Khalifa coming aboard as a musical performance definitely catering for more younger viewers. If this year is another success on both the TV and attendance front, there may be a real case in saying that The Clash has fully been reborn. Now, with that though, I want to pass it all on to you. What is your preferred version of The Clash? And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.